I'll start cleaning the shutter blades first, I think. There's no special reason to start there, it's just uh, here in front of me and it's convenient. Shutter blades are the component here we need to have the cleanest, that's the most sensitive to uh, contaminants. So you can see the colour of that. It's certainly all graphite powder and rubbish coming off. Now the graphite powder probably wouldn't have done any harm to the shutter blades themselves or the way that they work. But that uh, large amount of loose graphite powder would inevitably find its way onto the inside surfaces of the lens and you'd end up with problems with flare um, that would be your most obvious problem and if you looked at the lens you'd see tiny sparkles of graphite on it as soon as I've done these blades we'll have a look at the, the lenses and see if they do show any signs of that I'd be rather surprised if they are not, but given that the lenses were loose, they may have been in and out and cleaned half a dozen times. I've got strong window light coming in from the side here so I can check these blades with reflected check the light reflecting off them from the window uh, it often makes it easier to judge how clean they are whether there's any problem with corrosion or roughness there's a mark on that blade I'm not entirely sure what that is Blades do get scuffed as they run over each other. Um, they're, not, they're not a serious problem. I think those blades will be fine. You can see the amount of dirt that's coming off on the cotton bud. There's certainly a problem there. Let's have a quick look at these lenses. This is the inside surface of the rear lens group. I don't know you'd be able to see that but there's quite a bit of graphite powder loose on that lens and it just looks like little silvery sparkles. In the front group the same to a lesser extent. The diaphragm blades, let's deal with these. These are less sensitive to oil than the shutter blades, but they should be clean and they should be oil free. Interestingly, they do not look particularly graphited. There's obviously some on here but not to the same extent as the shutter blades which suggests that the graphite was put on from the front of the shutter directly onto the blades, the shutter blades yeah that's coming off quite dirty I suspect that uh, the graphite may be masking some slight oil contamination there because you get a sort of slight yellow colour to this that would be a, an indication of oil
So we're still looking for our mystery one millimetre brass pin from the escapement, supposedly. Which is a puzzle to me. We'll find out, I suppose, in the fullness of time. Right, that's our blades all tidied up. Let's pop them to one side, clean up these other components. I sometimes use graphite powder if I've got a diaphragm that is a little bit stiff in its action after it's been cleaned usually because the blades are quite badly distorted and that means that there's more friction as they roll over each other it's certainly not a problem with these blades by the looks of them they look quite flat See that dirt coming off there? That's oil. That's um, it means that the shutter hadn't been completely stripped and serviced, or not, not immediate, not lately anyway. Well, that's cleaned up well. Here's the retainer. Of the fixed plate and the shutter blades run on one side of this plate the diaphragm blades are running against the other side so both sides need to be clean the face here that the shutter blades were running against is quite obviously marked with graphite powder well I take it for if it's graphite I suppose it could just as easily be molybdenum powder. I don't know what that's like in its powdered state. And the case. The mechanism plate.
Jesus, and she was already there. She must have misunderstood the time. See you later. See ya. Just my wife off to a ladies' afternoon tea. Right, well that mechanism plate's probably as good as I need that to be. Let's just have a look at that detent spring. It just seems to stick up in the air a bit there. I'm not entirely happy with that. Let's see if I can get that off there and give that tweak that spring a bit. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, funny shaped. If I can't get it to my satisfaction, I've got plenty of spares. Alright, two pairs of pliers. Let's give this a twist. That looks a bit happier. See if I can get that popped into place. Yeah, that seems all right. Okay, Another the last couple of pieces to get sorted out. The lens tube. The uh, rotating internal cocking ring rotates around this, so it needs to uh, be clean and non-sticky. That is quite clean. The shutter is generally is in pretty good order, and it's certainly been serviced before. Um, but for whatever reason. It's been treated with graphite powder, which of course would not have dealt with any serious issue. Right, let's see if we can put this mechanism plate together to start off with. Detent swung into place. There it is. Yeah, that detent's still off. It's got a kick. It kicks upwards at this end, and I think that's likely to potentially cause a problem. So I'm going to do a bit more work on that spring. It may potentially catch on something sticking up like that. It's not all lying in one plane. Let's try that. You never know the history or the complete history things like this shutter. Things may have been done to it that were not wise. Or damage can be accidental. You know, things can get caught when you're trying to do something else. You might accidentally catch on something. Yeah, that's sitting a lot flatter now. I'm happy with that. Right, 
the lens tube just goes on here and it goes on in one position and there are three screws that hold the lens tube in place one of the screws is longer than its two mates and that goes through the bracket and the bracket goes on that pin there you see any of this you adjust If you get the screws mixed up, you will not have enough threads engaged in this position, and so you're likely to end up stripping the screw out. And in the other two positions, you'd have too much screw, and it would stick out the other side and catch the shutter blades. That's correct. The screw should be slightly below the surface on the other side so that they don't catch on shutter blades. That's all three screws done up tight. Let's check the action of that, that's working fine. So there's the mechanism plate reassembled. Now this I will lubricate with some graphite powder because it's clean and dry and uh, there's no oil to catch and stick stuff so it should work well. The diaphragm I need to assemble first. Here's my assembly jig which consists of a couple of sockets from the socket set and it works really really well. We've got these blades, we've got five blades easy to do the first view because they just stack on top of each other. When we get round to blades 4 and 5 it's more entertaining because we have to pull the first few blades back out of the way here to expose the hole that the pivot goes into. And here, we've got to pull back both of these blades. And as you can imagine, when you're dealing with a shutter with 9 or 10 diaphragm blades, this is even more entertaining. Alright, so now I've got to lift the first blades back over the top of the pins here, without disturbing anything. Those blades are all in position. The moving plate goes on here and it goes on in this position with the rivet post sticking up here. That's where you adjust the aperture. The case only goes on in one position. This little rivet that sticks up at the back here drops into a hole in the case here. So if I lower the case on there carefully, find that rivet, get it through the hole, give that a bit of a wriggle, we should be good. Flip my jig over and now it just needs three screws to hold the retainer plate in place in the case. That little rivet locates the retainer plate so that the screw holes are automatically lined up. No fighting required. And the screws, I do them up very lightly indeed until I've checked that the diaphragm blades are moving smoothly and that I haven't accidentally knocked something out of place when I'm putting the case over it. Now yeah, looking in here, I can see the five shiny pivots in the plate, so I know that that's correct. And if I move my setting lever on the back here, that all moves smoothly. So that's good. I can tighten up the three screws. And 
Now I want to check the feel of the diaphragm, make sure it moves smoothly, there's no rough, roughness, that's good. graphite powder on here next. Right this is the container I normally do this job in so it's got loose graphite powder in the bottom of it. I just pick some up with the tweezers, drop it into the, those slots there and then I want to work that plate out right and ring backwards and forwards to distribute that graphite powder down between the blade actuating ring, mechanism plate and the lens tube. That's all that's required. And now I'll go and blow that graphite powder out. And with that done, we're just about ready to put things together. So I'll just check that that's all moving smoothly. Check that I've got my blade actuating ring against the post here. That's the blade's open position. And I can start assembling my five blades. And the five blades start here. Use a toothpick to help me position the blades. And unlike the diaphragm blades, shutter blades do just lay one and on top of the other. So you start in one position there. Go around anti-clockwise, laying them on like this. There they are, they're all sitting in place and I can lower the case over the top. The case only goes on in one position. It's not too hard to work out where it's going to be. i lower that over that without disturbing the blades. For one reason or another it's been reluctant to go, there we go. Line that up. There's three case screws. There's the countersunk screws. Again, do the screws up very lightly so that you, if you've managed to displace one of the shutter blades while you're putting the case over, you don't want to crush it and damage it. So do the screws up very lightly indeed and check that the, they close. And they do. That's all good. Do those three screws up snug. Check that the blades move. That's the catch that's held back by the self-timer. That's good. Alright. Start putting pieces back into the shutter next. 